Owner is 130 points ahead. Serious race for second though, and that's a that's a real deal. That's a real deal thing right there. Serious race for second, four points separating two and three on the men's side. Hey guys, what's going on? Armin oh. Hammer here, Justin LaFranco with the morning chalk up. Stats. Stats on stats on stats. So we broke into uh, uh, one of the ballrooms here at the Intercontinental Hotel. Uh, and it's really nice here. It's quiet. It's quiet, mm, it's air conditioned, mm, it smells mm, nice. Mm, 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 mm. There's none of that going on here, which is really, really nice to be honest with you. But either way, it is the afternoon of Sunday, day three, Wadapalooza, one event to go. 2019, one event, remaining until we find who gets the next invites to the 2019 cross fit game with that long ridiculous intro out of the way there's a couple things that you guys are going to need to know going into tonight's events like basic math Basic math, like what he was talking about right before we started. Talk to me, Justin. Ladies first, uh, Tia Claire Toomey is 66 points in the lead, which basically means you would she would have to DNF a workout and get dead last or be disqualified for some reason, like an injury, to not shore this up. She basically, don't throw that juju out into the universe, but she kind of has universe. this locked she up, She hasn't right? had a, a worse finish in second place in this entire event, and there's a, so it's really unlikely that that's going to happen. God, a second How place? Ever! It's so disappointing. The fight for second, third, fourth, and fifth is a real deal, and something that we wrote about earlier this morning, late last night, was what happens to two through five, because there's a couple scenarios that are really important. Number one, Two and three get invited to Fittis in Cape Town next week. Two through five get invited to Brazil CrossFit Championship in a couple of months. And then two, three, four, maybe five also have the outside chance of being invited to the CrossFit Games because a preceding athlete qualifies by another means. And that's super important and it's playing into how the leaderboard shapes up. That's really important, guys, because we found out with the backfilling rules that every sanctional is going to have an invited athlete, and the athletes that get invited are going to be backfilled through the basis of whoever gets other ways of qualifying or invitations to the CrossFit Games. So if any of these athletes go on to win another sanctioned event or are national champions or take top 20 in the World Wide Open, which a lot of these athletes have yep. the capacity to do one, two, or all three of those, we're gonna be seeing like fourth, fifth, and sixth place in some of these early sanctioned events taking the cake. And as we always say in CrossFit, every rep counts. So in this case- Do we always say that? Yeah, it's, it's like a movie. Every second counts, whatever. It's first documentary, <laughs> doesn't matter. Smooth. It does matter actually. Let's move on to the men. The dudes, so um, this one's pretty much in the bag because Patrick Vilna has 548 points in first place and Travis Mayer has 418 points, which is exactly 130 points difference. Now, just to remind me, how many points can he gain in one event? 100. And how many points is he ahead of second place? 130. Ooh, that sounds like Vellner is doing Fraser things. Yeah. Yeah, that that's amazing. Like that sounds a lot like a Frasier. In case you missed it, by the way, uh, you should check out our, my Instagram story. I think you probably have it on your Instagram story too. It came down to the final little stretch on the final event, event six, the snatches, the final snatch of event six. No Olsen had gotten to his 275 pound bar ahead first. of Pat Vellner. Locked it up, got his hands on it first, but just missed it behind him. Started wobbling around a little bit. Pat Vellner took advantage of that moment and hit, I think, what would be like a 600 pound PR with a 275 pound snatch. And uh, it was very, very impressive. I was talking to him after the event and I, I told him, you know, very honestly that I was worried that he was gonna fall down the leaderboard on that event. And then Clearly he walked not. away with a win. Yeah. So I think Pat Vellner, in case the multiple podium finishes at the CrossFit Games, and also the dominant performances at regionals aren't enough evidence. I think Vellner might be the real deal, guys. 110%. Actually, 130%. Wow, 130%. Oh, I see what you did there, very nice. Let's take a look at the teams real quick too because they just got updated and I, I want to take a look at something. I want to notice that uh, first off, 
Travis William has almost certainly won his bet with me because Ooh, look at that. Uh, on the podium right now, third place position. Yeah, he and Very Plus Ultra are on the podium, and CrossFit Mayhem Freedom is in sixth place. Now there is only like twenty something. No, hmm. there's only like forty something points between them, but no big deal. I don't think that's going to be made up because, and this is something that you know we've talked about a little bit, and I mentioned previously, the scoring on the team side is it's using lopsided. the same scale as the individuals, which is made for a field of 40 competitors, and there's only 13 teams. So something has to be done. Wadapalooza is aware of that. They, I think they tried to figure out how best to, to do that and couldn't come to a consensus, so this is the next best thing. The scoring will literally make no difference, though. I mean, you can't DNF two workouts and still win a competition with only seven workouts. Yeah. So it, it has nothing to do with that. But either way, it, huge shout out. Ramwad Wit, uh, they're about 45 points ahead of second place, which is lesser evil. Both of these teams are really talented. Ramwad Wit is uh, is kind of you know on the fence. I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to be declining their invite uh, the once the they win because Jamie Green wants to go individual, and that isn't the end of the world. They could actually take the. She's very excited. That that girl screaming is very excited about Jamie Green. They could actually take the invite. And, uh, and put on two other people on their roster, and Jamie Green can actually go individual and they can sub her out with no problems. I'm not sure if they're gonna want to do that because, you know, Jess Griffith and Alex Smith and Cody Mooney, they're, they're really talented athletes and they might be looking for alternative ways of making it to the games. But it's always good to have a ticket to go as an insurance, and which is what a lot of what we're seeing with some of these athletes saying, hey, we'll go on a team, we'll create a super team. If we qualify, great, and that's kind of a backup plan. So TBD on what they've actually decide to do once they finally win the event later on hopefully later on this evening and then but surprisingly team lesser evil which is the same invictus team that won in dubai exact same members is also uh what 35 45 points back but they're in second place and yeah. that puts them a number one finish in dubai a number two finish mm -hmm. in a in a very team oriented competition here in wadapalooza that makes them a really serious Serious contender for a top podium spot. Yeah, I like watching them compete. Rasmus Anderson is they super they're fit. Doing. They're all super fit. They all know what they're doing. But, you know, one of the things that is worth touching on here is why is it that a team made of veterans who have been very, very successful at regionals and the games was unable to actually put together a good weekend? Is there something going on with, with Mayhem Freedom? Is there something going on with Mayhem Independence? One thing to keep in mind here is that you know, while the team members are generally the same for Mayhem Freedom, I don't think it's the personnel switches that are making big issues. I, I think there's a couple things to focus here. One is the level of competition on the team side is significantly higher significantly than higher. it ever has been before because of the super team factor. And the second thing to focus on is that Rich Froning is absolutely a student of the game, and he was able to play the game based off of Dave Castro's programming. He knows Dave Castro's programming, he knows the style, he knows what to expect. And while the absurd levels of fitness that these guys have coming into an event like this will carry them so far, you have to be able to meet it halfway. Well, the funny thing is it's actually the first time that Mayhem as a team has competed outside of an official CrossFit, um, a, a former official CrossFit event like regionals or the games. Correct. And so this is a new test. This is a different kind and style of competition in a totally different area. And so perhaps that's playing into the reasons why they're being a little bit less successful. And some of the events are different. They are outdoors where they're typically competing indoors until they're, they're at the games. So yeah. maybe there's some factors out there that are external. We don't really know the story yet, but what we do know is that their preparation here didn't pan out. Preparations A through G didn't work, and Preparation H has not been treating them well. Ouch. Burn. Yeah, it burns. Anyway, folks. On that happy note. We're going to try and get to the bottom of that and maybe get you guys some more details on that later. There is still an event left, Event 7. It's like, you know, air bike and cleans and all axle this bar, crazy stuff. Bar, yeah, axle front bar, rock, front rack, lunges, lunges and stuff. And it's going to be really fun to watch. And while the leads are basically not going to change, the point is there are great races left. And yeah. we are here to update you with that. Thank you so much for watching. And we're going to catch you after it's all over. Later. Peace.